What up YouTube? We're back at it again. I hope you enjoyed the radiator video because we have a huge one today. And I think it's what all of us have been waiting for. So we're going to be getting this motor in the car. I'm not going to seal up the oil pan for now because I still have to figure out where I'm going to be putting the oil drain. Um, so I figured I'll get the motor in the car, figure out exactly where I'm going to put the turbo, and then from there I'll figure out where the drain is going to go in the oil pan. But we'll get the engine adapter on. We're going to have the, the new flywheel the new clutch, we're gonna, it, it's gonna be good. All right, so finally I'm gonna put this homemade engine to all you to the test. Let's see how it goes. All right, now that we've got the engine adapter on, we're gonna put in the studs to go to the motor. Um, the only thing important to note is that the long one will go on the location where the starter is, which is on the, on the Beetle Passenger Super Driver. Next thing we need to do is fit this flywheel on here. This is special made to have the correct offset between all the uh, spacing differences in the little dog here. Uh -huh. Somehow. So hopefully this just fits.
And one more advantage of this engine stand is to torque the, torque the flywheel. It was as easy as grabbing the crank bolt on this side and tightening each one down. I already torqued them all. I forgot to record it, but just in case you're ever in this situation, I highly suggest this like $15 engine dolly that we put together. And we will put a link to that video here. Alright, so we got the clutch in here with our alignment tool. And uh, I just have one bolt and the pin in place. So we're going to go through now and lock tight the others. And we'll do it in star pattern as best we can. Alright, so we're actually going to have to cut up a little bit more than I planned on. Looks like we're going to cut pretty much this section out right here. It's actually pretty common, I realized. And, uh, yeah, we'll start with the vertical and then we'll figure out, I might also have to clearance. I may also have to clearance right here and the same thing on the other side so I can access the spark plugs um, and stuff like that a little bit easier. So we're going to start by taking off where that white pants of line is. Alright, so let's slide this in and see how close we are. But the problem I'm having is it's still way, way, way too tight on the valve covers. Alright, so this bolt here and this bolt here are not going to work. They're literally hitting the motor mounts or the transmission mounts. I decided that rather than sit here and pout, I'm going to 
remove the two lower bolts from now because I can easily pull this back out again and at least get this in here for the sake of my own enjoyment. So, and also kind of get you guys a video. So, let's get this bad bitch in here. Okay, so I've not been able to install this engine on the transmission. I think I finally figured out why. So you can see here, I have a late model transmission and it has this extra ring around the input shaft for the transmission. Now what I think is happening is I have a pressure plate from KEP, the same plate Kennedy engineered products that made the whole adapter kit for Subaru to Volkswagen. And I think this is a universal pressure plate and I'm pretty sure I need to remove this ring because it's not big enough to fit over this shaft. And all the reading I said is that I can remove this inner ring right here and it should make it possible to use the pressure plate. I, I think this is, they're making basically universal pressure plates. So this is made for a late model, uh, or earlier model and you can remove this ring and then use it for a late model. So I'm gonna give it a whirl because there's really not much to lose at this point. That looks a lot better. All right, let's try this again. I have a much better feeling this time. All right, YouTube, I'm happy to say that we're ending this video with the motor in, oops, there we go, in the car. And as you'll see, well, I should say, as you already saw from my frustration, sometimes it takes a little time to take a step away, kind of, maybe you gotta look online, maybe you gotta look at the problem you have at hand. I was fighting that throw bearing and the clutch pressure plate for quite a few hours. Then I took the time, took a step away, tried to figure out what was interfering, did my research online and realized I just made a stupid mistake of not taking out that little guide ring. So we'll end the video with that. I'm really excited. The next couple of videos we'll have some plumbing, some wiring, and hopefully sooner than later we'll get this thing started up and purring. So if you like what you saw, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe for more.